Hi there and welcome to Busternet. These are the adventures of Gloucester City. They have managed to get into the Premiership. It's not been easy. It's a small squad. They are trying their best to become one of the best. Before I begin the show proper, I want to share something with you. I have always been worried that I'm not doing enough for the community in general. I mean, I have uh, taken uh, elements of this show um, and featured them on the Patron channel, which is um, basically for all my patrons. I have exclusive videos made available to them, which cover everything. You know, we talk about I talk about tactics, scouting, coaching, training. Um, you know, elements in the game about how to identify transitions. It's really there's so I think there are about 40 exclusive videos now available to them. But my fear has always been am i doing enough on the manager diaries to help people who are not patrons uh, that was my biggest fear until i received a message from one of my subscribers and i have to give a shout out to him right now i'm going to give a special shout out to fabrizio Statzner. he's been a, he's a subscriber to our channel and he's not a patron and my biggest fear was am i doing enough for people who are not patrons is there enough information that goes on in my manager diaries to help them well apparently it has helped him and i want to thank him for uh, this message that he's put out us uh, and i want to acknowledge that uh, i want to say congratulations you've done pretty well with hereford and uh, he has managed to get them uh, into the champions league won the Europa League as well. So uh, I'm very happy to see how you use the it to create a 442 diamond based around attributes, uh, choosing the right players with the right roles. I will continue to do my shows in such a way that it helps patrons as well as non-patrons. Like I said before, this the patrons are keeping this channel going and I've uh, because of their contributions, it allows me to put out more shows and help everybody else in general. Now, patrons do get exclusive videos. There are about forty videos right now available to the patrons, and I was always worried. You know, is there enough content on the manager diaries to help non-patrons out? And I'm glad to see it has helped Fabrizio Statsner enter the Champions League. And good luck in the Champions League. I will always try to help non-patrons. If the subscribers have ask me questions i will try to answer those questions and if possible you know features a question on future shows once again if you've not subscribed to the channel please subscribe and uh let's get let's try and see whether i can help even more players out well after that fantastic start to the season you saw it here we struggled we struggled we struggled we drew against chelsea we drew against arsenal we got knocked out by wickham in the fa cup Yes, we did. FA Cup third round. Out of the FA Cup, th at the hands of Wickham Wanderers. Bad runs then after the Everton a point. Uh, Liverpool, we lost. West Ham, we drew. It's not getting better. It's not getting easier for us. So how did this bad run happen? Firstly, the first reason why it's happened is I've lost Eric Kone to international duty. He returns on the 13th of February, 2023. Okay, there's still one more month of him not being around. The moment he left, my left flank opened up. Goncalo Luiro stopped looking like the demigod that he is because he was blocking nearly everything in all the games. But Kone was actually around to help him out for some of these matches. The moment Kone went for international duty, the whole left flank opened up. So we started having problems. Taylor Moore got sent off for a rash tackle. Then was suspended for a few games because of his stupid red card in the, uh, the match against Arsenal. And... Uh, his absence as well, you know, right in the center, harder defense cost us. So we've lost quite a quite a lot of uh, momentum during that period. And why am I not signing more players? Now, people have asked me this question. Why don't you rotate? Why don't you bring players off the bench? Honestly, my bench is very thin at the moment. I, I, it's, I don't have a very deep squad. And what you see is what you get. My goal is to sign players. I want to wait for my stadium to go up. I want my training facilities to be improved. So I've got about maybe another year before I start looking for reputable players to join the club. Then our club reputation goes up. So I want to do this in stages. And I don't want to go out there and just buy players up. I want to use these players who were around last season. And I want to try and repeat our performance from last season with as many of these players as I possibly can without really having to 
return to the transfer market so yeah we're gonna try our best with these boys so for the match against Burnley I plan to be a bit more offensive um, however we are not going to go overboard in the offensive department because I'm gonna get hit like a truck um, even if it's Burnley at the bottom of the table we have to be aware of our own limitations however I do want to play players who normally don't get carded as well so i'm going to have olmedo attacking from this side i'm going to have mamija supporting this flank greek will be the poacher up front of butenko and uh, we'll try and show up this flank and try and keep this uh, we won't be attacking so much but if i need to i can release cannon later in the game i have a very strong temptation to go to a diamond so i can get mark mcnulty to play some games so here we go uh, all set for the match against bernie bottom of the table they are and uh, we are going to be watching this match on extended and i will play on control flexible at the start back to hanks out to mamija mamija to almedo almedo looks around finds greek greek holds the ball for almedo and then out to hanks to luis simo back to Olmedo we are definitely going to try and put more of the attack down the left flank because this that's where they've conceded most of their goals from Cannon tries to get a cross in but the cross is blocked corner taken by Joe Hanks drops it in Louis rising up Hanks again puts it back into the box Greek with the chance oh they could not line up the shot that was a really good chance for Gloucester City to get the match going with an opening goal but here come Burnley on the counter get into the box wings out there come on don't yes Mamija clearing the danger oh man we're gonna miss Eric Coney on the left flank without him around um, we have certainly looked a very different team Joe hangs with a free kick into the wall. It goes and they barely clear the ball. Goes out to touch. Now we have a chance to do something from the throw. Provided it's worth a highlight. It is. Cannon to Collado. Collado plays it back to Cannon. Cannon crossing it in. And they manage to deal with that. Hendrik out wide to Akpom. Akpom. Akpom ice skates through our team and takes a shot. Mm. Hint, hint. Defensive line might be a bit high. Free kick Walker rising. That was not going to threaten the keeper. 15 minutes in. Quarter an hour almost gone. And uh, we still haven't really done very much. Mamija, Olmedo, Hanks. Back to Luismo. Luismo to Hanks. Plays a nice ball for Greek. What a goal! What a ball from Hanks over the top of the defense. Greek just perfectly waited for Will Greek to get onto the end of that one. He latches onto it and he fires it home for the opening goal. Just look at this pass from Joe Hanks. What a beauty of a pass. And look at Greek. He just had to wait and what a nice goal. Almost looks like a half wally. He let it bounce off the ground before smashing it home. Will Greek, he is back. And uh, yes, now we have to defend. Ball into the box. Colado, all we need now is a, to, for our side to give away a penalty. Let's take some bets. Let's all see whether we give away a penalty because I suspect we will. To Hendrik. Hendrik plays it back to Chaloba. To Winks. I actually met a guy in the US. His name was Harry Winks. That's true. Ryan says it on out on the flanks. Back to Hendrik. Hendrik. Well, somebody should tell Hendrik that the goal is a bit more to the right. But if they keep doing this the whole game, then I can't complain. Ordinarily, if people are having problems finding the back of the net, I usually tell them to go to comprehensive. But I am kind of happy that we have a one goal lead and still creating some uh, problems for. Uh, Burnley at the back and we're not going to bother with uh, doing anything right now to adjust the way we play because at the moment uh, we're spending 12% of the time in Burnley's final third and I'm happy with the numbers if you look at uh, Burnley they've only spent 7% of the time in our final third so that's okay Luis Simi to Butenko Butenko now looks up he doesn't see Cannon anywhere near there so he has to play the pass to Olmedo Olmedo hits the ball but uh, it wasn't a it was not a very good good attempt all right amici 
Uh, I'm getting bored, so I'm going to change formations uh, to a 442 diamond. Why am I doing this? Really, we, we have to lead. No, no, my, my head is saying, what are you doing? You, you have to lead. Why are you being such a retard? Yes, I am being a retard at the moment. I just want to do something different. I miss this system. Okay, we're going to go to the... Uh, we're going to go to the 442 diamond because I miss it. Haven't been using it for a long time. Uh, pass into space, please. Thank you. And we confirm the changes and the boys are off again. Changing formations midstream. Not something I like to do, but never mind. Yeah, some people are bored. Mamija. One long ball for Will Greek. <laughs> Look at him take that ball and gives it away. I, mean, I should stop being so happy to see him win the ball. But he does well. He goes back to win the ball again. Colado launches another deep ball and hangs again. This is a right royal battle in midfield. Will Greek. Back to Mamija. Mamija looks around, finds Joe Hanks. Joe Hanks plays it back to Colado. Uh, to Luisimo. To Butenko. Butenko looks to Olmedo. Olmedo to... All right. Now... Guys, seriously, can we get some of these shots on target? Thank you very much. With 10 minutes to go, we do expect them to come at us. Widmer to ball. Ball looks around for support. And he gets it to Swift. Swift lines up the shot, but just as he took that shot, Taylor Moore threw himself at it and managed to block it. Walker now. Drops it in. Joe Hanks clears the danger only as far as uh, a Burnley player. Burnley will try to get this back into play. And yes, yeah, St. Johnston rising up, picking that. Cannon has picked up a card. And uh, Butenko will be making his way down to the bench. Ball to Walker. Shots never going to threaten the keeper. As you can see, we're still having quite a share. We're still spending quite a fair bit of time in the final third, so I'm happy. There's no need for... I mean, that's one of the reasons why I'm being so experimental. I don't see them really threatening us. So, okay, cool. We'll enjoy ourselves. This was a terrible performance from Gloucester City. Uh, and uh, we've uh, only had two shots on target. The boys are really have, being a bit like a disciple in their performance. Gloucester City have beaten Burnley. It wasn't a very good performance and um, we'll have to do a lot better against other teams. But it's enough for us to be in the you know, top half of the table, fourth on the table, 24 matches played and uh, yeah, we 43 points. I guess we could drop as far as 5th or 6th and we're still keeping our Europa. We, we're targeting Europe next season. I don't, I don't know whether we're going to make it to the Champions League still early and uh, we still have some big matches to be played this season. Uh, we have Man United, Man City, Arsenal. So three rather big games. I don't know whether we can, we can actually get back into Europe. But Will Greg has certainly done enough to get us all three points and I'm very very happy to see that well we followed up that 1-0 win over Burnley with another 1-0 win over Burnmouth um, very much uh, we were not the side in the descendancy but one thing I am very happy with this was Burnmouth's uh, heat map Gloucester City on the other hand back to the same stuff that we normally do we controlled the zone we created some good chances and uh, the opening goal was a Beautiful goal from Joe Hanks. A lot of good work. Butenko out to Luisimo. The boys uh, had a seamless transition from defense to midfield to attack. Greek pulling the players to him and then leaving Hanks open for the goal. And that got us off from the fifth minute. And from the fifth minute until the end of the match, what were we doing? We were defending. Yes, we were defending this one goal lead that we got in the sixth minute. And we beat a side uh, that the pundits had said would beat us. So we we beat the odds. And we continue. I'm still a bit concerned with this. Putenko hasn't been performing very well. He's not scoring a lot of goals. So he's under some. He's feeling the pressure. And I'm hoping that um, as the season progresses, he will do a lot better. In terms of our tactic, I know it's very boring. We've been using the 4-1-3-2. We've been using... We've been using this 4 one 3 2 and I'm trying my best to stick to one tactic for the for the uh, duration of the season. However, eventually I'll get bored because it doesn't really strike me as 
Wow, such great goals. And I miss my 4 3 1 2. I miss, even miss the 4 2 3 1, having said that. But remember one thing that, why am I using this 4 1 3 2? Okay, it's because of these players. Goncalo Luis Rero is an average defender, but he's surrounded by players who can tackle, like Colado. You know, these players are doing a fantastic job in front of him by screening the, the, the front so that uh, whenever Luiro has to make any kind of a tackle, he's okay. And don't forget, he's been playing with Kony on the left flank. Kony has been an absolute beast as the left back. And uh, he has made Luiro look very, very good. Now, if I were to use any kind of a system that's like a 4 3 one two or a 4 2 3 one where I don't have a screen in front of Louis, I'm probably going to concede a lot more goals and we can't really depend on Taylor Moore to do everything because this guy has a tendency of getting sent off. He's already had one red card this season and I am worried that, you know, he's going to get us into trouble again. But I like having Taylor Moore in the side because he does some deep passes from the back and uh, he likes to switch balls to the other flank so it's very good to have him in the side because he he tends to switch the focus of the play and we are very we're very okay at the moment with this system however i do want to change i'm getting bored with this 4 one three, 2 it's sending me to sleep in half my matches i'm just sitting down there going oh, okay these boys are going to score but i can't take this anymore I'm probably going to start using a different tactic very soon because I can't do this for the whole season. 4-1-3-2 is very boring, man. It's easily one of the most boring systems in the world. Look at this. I've never had so many 1-0 wins. Wow, look at that. I mean, you can count the number of 1-0 wins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I can count. 9. Uh, there we go. We've had 10, 10 and 11. We have 11 1-0 wins this season. It's amazing. This is a fantastically solid defensive system. I mean, it's very hard to break a 4-1-3-2 down if you set it up right. It's one of the... you more likely to get a draw out of this if you can set it up right. And the only teams that are going to really hammer you are the sides that are you know, a lot better than you. Then it's only right. But against most of the sides, I can hold on to a 1-0 win. I, get, I score the early goal, that's it, I'm off, I'm smiling. And I have options, I can change this into a flank-based attack, I can release Olmedo, I can drop Hanks into a deeper position and then we can actually do launching from the left flank. The only thing I have to think of now is, am I really going to play this for the rest of the season? I don't know. I'm very tempted to change. I'm probably going to change for... I'm probably going to start playing the 4 3 one or some other system before the match against Olympiacos. And then when Olympiacos come calling, they're going to get, what are they doing? They changed the tactic. Yeah, you never know. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Gloucester City Diaries. If you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at BusterNet or addicted to fmcom That's my website. Once again, I'd like to thank all my patrons for continuing to support this channel. Your generosity has kept this channel going. And yes, I have a new exclusive video about scouting just for you and for the rest i'll cover that in another show very soon so you take care have a good one bye bye